Hello everybody, this is David with another Verilog video. This time I'm going to cover a register file and how to create one in Verilog and I'm also going to simulate it in Vivado. So here's the basic microprocessor block diagram, the same one I used for the ALU video. And right here you see the register file. And this is where you keep quick access information. It's uh, separate from memory. I, you know, it's not really cache memory, but uh, registers are general purpose for, for moving data in and out real quick for computations and operations and stuff. Um, the control unit down here will basically decode the, uh, the program. The, uh, let's see, if you're using a 32-bit processor, then you'll have a 32-bit um, instruction word, and it will decode that instruction, um, which will have uh, register locations, whether you want to uh, store information in a register or read from a register. And so here's the basic uh, block diagram for a register file. We'll have a write address, a read address, data when we want to write um, to the write address, and then also a write enable. And the read data come out. So essentially it works like when you have the write enable, whatever address you have coming in, your write address, the data coming in will get written to that address. When the write enable is off, you're not writing and um, you want to read from it, you'll send it a read address and then the data at that address will come out on the, on the read data line. Let me take you over to the code. Okay, here I am in Vivado. Here's the code for the register file. Um, I'm gonna, I did parameterize it so you can change it. Um, so write address, um, I'll show you down here how we do this, but so we have, um, essentially we're going to have eight addresses because however many addresses we're going to have, it's going to be two raised to the power of the right address. So this is going to end up as eight minus one, which is seven. So we'll have zero to seven. So we'll have eight different registers. And then the, the width of the data is eight bits. So this is the data width right here. Um, so for the module we come in, we have the clock, we have the right enable signal, the right address, which is seven down, uh, actually, nope, two down to zero. We're gonna have eight different addresses. Same thing for the read address, two down to zero. The data is seven down to zero, um, eight bits wide. Also, the read data is eight bits wide. So here's how we instantiate the register for that. It's the data width down to zero. So we'll have eight bits of data and the register file itself will have eight different addresses. And then the logic is always at the positive clock. If we have a write enable, uh, whatever write address we have in the uh, register file, we'll write the data coming in in the, uh, the write data input. And for reading, it's the, the data coming out. The read data is the register file, the information at the uh, read address when it comes in. And that's it. So here's the simulation for it. I created registers for all of the inputs, matching the bit widths for what I have um, in the parameters in there and wire to capture the read data and integer I am gonna use in for loops down here in the simulation. Here's where I instantiate the device under test, which is the register file. All the connections are the same, the names are the same, so it makes it easy to instantiate. Here's where I create the clock. We're gonna have a two simulation tick clock so every one simulation tick will go to not clock create that square wave um, come down here and, and uh, <clears throat> at the beginning of the initial block I uh, will set a value to each of the registers and initialize integer I then after three ticks I'll um, set right enable to high and then in this for loop I'll go through uh, 0 to 7 for I for each right address and then the data coming in is going to be the value of i times 10. So from zero to seven, we're gonna fill the registers with zero to 70 going by 10. Um, two simulation tick, we'll do it all again, go through the, the, uh, the for loop, and then I'll turn the write enable signal off, go through the for loop again, using i as the read address to read out the data that was stored uh, in the, from this for loop when we wrote to each address, and then finish. I already ran the simulation, here it is. Here's the clock at the top, here's the write enable signal. 
Uh, right here's the read address, write address, the write data, the read data, and integer i. You don't have to worry, worry about that down there. But um, so after, let's see, one, two, three ticks, I will set write enable high, and then I'll start. It's where the for loop starts, right here when i starts changing. So I have the write address going, uh, we'll start at zero, one, I'll go all the way up to seven, and then the value coming in. So 10 times 0 is 0, and then 10 times 1 is 10, 20, 30, 40. So this is all the data that's getting written to each address as we go through the for loop. Um, now this x value here is because um, read data is undetermined because there's nothing. Um, you're actually getting, you can get the data coming out of the register file whether you have uh, write enable or not. So um, before any anything is written, um, the value in each register is unknown, so the read data comes out as this until it starts getting written to. And the, the read address stays at zero, so the value written into the zeroth address will stay zero until we come through the simulation over here is where I start the other for loop, and now I'm changing the, the read address for i. So one, two, three, all the way up to seven, and then reading out the data that was stored when we, when we row to each address, which is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, as we, as we go through the register file. So there you can see the register file is working. I'll take you back to the code. Very simple register file in Verilog. Thanks for watching.